and welcome. My name is Stefan Dunkler and I'm a solutions engineer at Grafana Labs. And today I'm going to show you how to create your custom log dashboard. If you want to query logs, you typically start at explore mode. Explore mode, choose the logs data source, and then you have everything you need to get started with Loki and LogQL and get all the data out of your logs that you need. You can see what kind of labels there are. You can see the label values available. You can run the query, add some filters, do aggregations, everything you can do with LogQL that is super powerful. And in explore mode, you can even watch your logs live, meaning if you filter them down, you can see maybe only the errors or whatever the filter expression you need it to be. Now, if you want to do this often for a specific use case, then this can become quite tedious because you always have to enter the log, uh, the log QL statement, even though the query builder helps you a lot with that. But if you want to have something reproducible and even interesting for people that do not know LogQL, then it is a good practice or my recommendation to build a log dashboard. And that's what we're going to do now. So first of all, we are going to add that simple query to a new dashboard. Now with this panel, we didn't gain anything uh, as opposed to the explore mode. So what we have here is just the logs using that query and no immediate possibility to filter or aggregate them down instead of just adding new panels. And that's what we're going to do. First of all, I want to filter based on the cluster. So what I'm going to do is to add a variable called cluster. Note I'm choosing the query uh, variable type because I want to do a log query to my Loki instance to query for label values of the cluster label. And I also want to be able to choose multiple clusters or logs from multiple or all clusters. Currently, I only have one cluster called microBS. Apply, go back to my dashboard and I see this drop down list appears. To be able to use that in my logs, I need to add that label selector the cluster label using the cluster variable. Uh, the dollar sign is a sign for the variable. Running this query will not change anything on this log because I'm still only selecting that one cluster. As a next step, I want to be able to filter for anything in the log. And for that, I'm adding another variable. Variables, new variable. This time I'm choosing the text box, calling it filter because that's what I want to do with it. It's just a very simple filter variable and I have a text box here. Now if I enter something like post here, nothing will happen because my panel is not using the filter. I'm going to line contains, it's a filter in LogQL, add the filter variable here, run the queries, and I get no data because there's an E here. If I remove that, I should be able to get all of the logs that contain the word post. Great, so I can do custom filters. I can add as many custom filters and text boxes as I want, so I can combine multiple searches and also do exclusions. Like there's a negative filter um, possible that you can also uh, use by just configuring your log QL in this log statements accordingly. Now the challenge with text box filters is that you always have to enter the search string manually. You can literally search anything, but sometimes you just want to choose things from a menu, like you can do with template variables and labels. But best practice is not to label the whole log message. 
So the next thing that we're looking at are ad hoc filters to solve this problem. Ad hoc filters allow us to use labels that we pass from the logs and apply them on all log panels automatically across the dashboard. To implement this, I'm going to first parse the message. We already mentioned this is in log FMT. So I'm using the log FMT parser, the log format parser. What this does is it will add this set of fields parsed out to my Loki log message. Now I'm going to duplicate that to not rewrite the query, edit it and do some aggregations. I'm switching to the query builder mode. Click on range functions, count over time, choose the range interval go to aggregations and sum by label. Now I want to be able to choose the method post, get, delete, whatever the method is from a menu. So I'm summing up by method. I also switch from query type range to instant because I'm not interested in the full history of that. I only want to know what is the current state in our case in the last six hours. I already get like a few of the options that, that it provides. And now I'm choosing table as the visualization method. See the time of the query, the method, and how often these methods appear in the last six hours in the log messages. I'm using transform organize the fields because I'm not interested in the time I might not be interested in the in the value for now but I'm interested in the method and I'm giving it a name changing the panel title and press apply let's make it a little bit smaller and now I have uh, a nice filter now if I choose post here in the magnifying glass, it will automatically filter for the method post in all of the messages. I can remove the filter, try another one, the get method, and now I can easily filter for the method. Now let's make everything a little bit more visually appealing. To do this, first I'm going to duplicate this once more to keep the aggregation, edit, go to transform, get this value, because this shows the occurrences of the different methods within my log messages, choose pie chart as visualization type, and now I have a really nice visual representation of how often which of these method values uh, occurred. You will also notice this value A here, which is when no value for the label method was set. If we're not interested in this number, we can easily filter that out by applying a label filter like this one. Method, regular expression, and then a simple regular expression for it needs to exist. And when we run that query, we see only distribution of those labels without the ones that don't have a method set. Now let's apply this put it together um, on the left hand side, copy or let's add a title, that's the method distribution, apply and let's duplicate it one more time. Now this is pretty easy because now we can choose the log level for example, same principles run queries, apply, and rinse and repeat. Uh, once again, forgot the title of the panel. Rinse and repeat, duplicate, and the path is something that could be interesting in 
that's an interesting one indeed because now we see there is a lot of different paths and there might potentially be more than you're interested in maybe you're just interested in the top k so what you can do is you can wrap the whole query in a top k function and maybe you're only interested in the top 10 path of your application that are being accessed it's as easy as adding this statement to your path so this and yeah we can just make this a little bit smaller put it on the right hand side of this to have this kind of filter here and we just made everything a little bit more appealing the next thing i'm going to use is an advanced concept of grafana that you can use with all of your queries not only log queries data links data links can take the query result and put it into an external or internal link or even link to the same dashboard if you put it to another dashboard in grafana then you can do a drill down to a specific component if you're linking the same dashboard you can use it as a filter that's what i'm going to do for this i'm copying the url note that the url contains the cluster variable and the filter variable and this is the one that I'm using for my manipulation. I'm going to edit, add a data link, use the URL. I don't need the first part because I'm linking to the same Grafana instance. And I'm going to filter for the query result. Um, the part of the diagram that I want to click on contains the path. Now I apply that change and I can immediately, when I hover over it, it's a hyperlink, filter for that specific part across all of my logs. Now let's make some final adjustments to the dashboard to set it in production. To do this, I'm moving that panel over there, make it a little bigger, give that one a bit more space can adjust the size here give that one a bit more space and give that one a bit more space now I'm going to add it to table and add a few more labels to it like the level and the path which then all can be used as ad hoc filters from within this table when I run the query I see level method and path i will also add the value here give it a name the amount and since this amount the number of occurrences of all of those combinations of log level method and path is not visually appealing i will add an override here to make sure that my base field name with value a has a different cell type called gauge. Let's choose a nicer, more neutral color. Um, make sure that we sort by uh, amount. And because when I remove that filter here, there might be a lot of different combinations, I'm going to add another top K statement here. So for example, the top K 20 of all of the combinations that could occur and that should be working fine if i now run this query apply and remove that filter well that looks awesome this dashboard is pretty intuitive but it might not be for some especially if you build a more staged dashboard because if you build a staged dashboard with a specific use case in mind you can make it look much more complex. So what I like to do is to add a panel that only contains text with the instructions. So in this case, I'm calling it uh, instructions. You can use Markdown or HTML, or you can even add code. And you can basically add instructions to use this 
dashboard. If you click here, then this filter will be activated. If you do this, then that. That are enough instructions for now. And because, you know, not always is it the case that you want to see that block of instructions here that could get quite lengthy, you can introduce rows. One row for the instructions. We would also call it the instructions row. And then another row, maybe um, just below that one for log details. And now if you're an advanced user of this dashboard, you can just skip the instructions and go directly to the log details. Thanks for watching the video and I hope that you could learn a lot of new stuff on how to build log dashboards with Grafana. We actually did a lot in the past few minutes. We did apply a label filter, we added a text box filter, we added ad hoc filters, we added data links, we added some instructions and rows, and we made everything look super beautiful. Thanks again and hope to see you next time. Bye!